about a project that we're working on right now because I need some assistance with folks that are in this room. Um, what I want to talk to you about, have everybody seen a tomato field or a strawberry field? Yeah. Right? They use an LDPE plastic, it's called agricultural mulch film, in the growing of those fruits and vegetables. At the end of the growing season, now there's roughly 40,000 tons, let me say that again, 40,000 tons of this generated in Florida on an annual basis. There's 120,000 tons in California. At the end of the growing season, this material is piled up or pulled up, piled up, and then the way that it is managed, it's, there's some very large stockpiles of this stuff around the state of Florida and in California. There's a monofill in Immokalee in Collard County where they've been stockpiling this for years and just piling it up with the hope that one day somebody's gonna be able to solve the problem and be able to do something with it. The other way that is managed is actually burnt in the field at the end of the growing season. We have an exemption in 403 here in the state of Florida on the Solid Waste Act that allows the farmers to burn the plastic in the field, the same field that they're growing your next crop of fruits and vegetables. Can't be bad for you. Um, so that's an example right there of the burning. The other thing that it is done once it is burned, typically plowed back into the field. Or it, it's in, in terms of the other way that it's piled, we did an experiment real quick of trying to figure out how you get this stuff out of the field. So we d used a back of baler, bailed it up, and what you think, and this is the whole issue with the, the mulch film, what you think is a clean bale of plastic film is very, very far from it. It's roughly 70% by weight soil. So I've done projects where we've looked at setting this stuff all over the place, trying to find a you know, sustainable solution, and, and that has always stopped because eventually, you know, once people get involved in trying to recycle this, they just can't deal with the amount of soil contamination. Um, that is a microscopic view of uh, plastic, virgin plastic. Uh, you see that, that uh, pattern on there, that's called embossment. It gives the film rigidity as it stretches over the, uh, the, the mound of, that's in the, the farm field itself. This is the same microscopic picture after that film has been applied to land. And so you can see that the, the square pattern is filled in. Uh, that's biofilm. And then you see that crystal right there. That's actually a grain of sand. So that tells you how small that micro, micro pattern is. It's very impressive how the manufacturing, they can do that. Um, I've looked at, you know, how you, I, one of the things I wanted to know when looking in this is, you know, what level of contamination is really there. So I grabbed some shredded film, I went through a process of, of weighing it, did a little sample, this is a 16 ounce sample. I did a triple wash bath on that film itself, added a little flocculent to it, and then extracted everything out boiled off the water, and what I got was a four ounce sample from that 16 ounces. So that proves my point of the, the, the amount of soil contamination associated with that film. That's, you know, you had roughly eight ounces of soil there. It's pretty impressive when you look. You're not really recycling plastic, you're recycling soil. Um, if you look at, those are the results, 70% uh, soils, actually 74% total soil and moisture contamination for this particular uh, sample. We've looked at how you reduce that soil, and one thought is, well, let's try to leave the soil in the field to begin with. So we looked at extraction technologies where we basically roll the film up out of the field and develop some strategies and methodology to leave the film. Once we pull it up, we would basically let it sit in the field for a little bit let the sun hit that plastic, and once you start handling it and pulling it, the, the, a good bit of the soil falls off the film. And it's a lot easier to maneuver that film out of the field at that point. But convincing the farmers to go down this route is a very difficult process. They're set in their ways. From, all right, so if you look at why traditional recycling has not worked, there's been three companies in the state of Florida uh, up till now that have had not had success in recycling the film. The other alternatives is the alternative fuel industry for the cement industry. 
or potentially uh, advanced chemical recycling where you're, you're taking the material, breaking it down through pyrolysis or gasification and creating other petrochemicals. I ran a trial at a cement plant where we brought in a mobile shredder. So my thought process is if traditional plastic recycling equipment, shredders can't deal with the amount of soil, there are shredders out in the marketplace that can deal with abrasive materials. So I thought of the CND. So I ran a trial with E-Factor 3 where we brought in a mobile shredder and a star screen, shaker screen, or actually this was a star screen. And we shredded the film ran it through the, the screen itself. Uh-oh. That's not good. That was a video. Can you advance it? Yeah. Once we get to there. Okay, all right. So we're, uh, again, shred, uh, separating out the soil. And then from that shreds going straight into the, the plant itself that they're using. There is another facility here in Florida, and Ishmael, raise your hand because I want everybody to get to know you, sir. There's a company called Resi Poly in LaBelle, Florida. Resi Poly actually started this process eight years ago with developing or buying equipment with a thought process, we want to recycle agricultural film. They started operations, the original owners of the facility, and two years into it, they realized the equipment, and I heard somebody else make a, a comment today on one of the panels about make sure that the equipment you're buying does what it's supposed to do. Well, this is a great example of that. The original equipment that the company bought wasn't able to, to process the contaminated soils on that film. The problem is, so they shifted their, their business model, started recycling plastic bags, right? the next thing that doesn't have that amount of contamination. Well, the problem is, is they've got a stockpile of about 35,000 tons of agricultural plastic mulch. Perfect place for me to go and pitch my idea of going after a, a, a grant from the state of Florida, which I got last year, where we got a, a, some money to buy a mobile shredder and, and stage it in front of Recy Poly's recycling operation. So this is the mobile shredder we got. It's an M and J shredder. It will shred up to 10 tons an hour, so we're very capable to try to help solve the problem within the state. The next phase of the, the trials that we're doing right now is looking at various screening technology. So this is a SPOLAC, this is a vibratory screen that we've looked at trying to reduce the, the soil level. Um, we've also looked at trommel screens. So in this particular picture, you can see the... You know, no, right there. All right, so shredding, going into the, the trommel, right from there. Right now, we're just staging it right now. Eventually, it will go into the plant where the plant has developed more type of screening technologies. They've got a, a dry uh, trommel screen and then a wet trommel screen. Um, this particular idea works but we're still not there. It, it's just mind boggling how much soil is there. And so that's where I'm reaching out to everybody in this room to kind of raise your awareness about the issue. We need more ideas about how to reduce that soil level. If you think of it, when that film has direct ground contact, um, when it's pulled up, there's a lot of moisture associated with the underside of that film. And that moisture holds the soil. Right? And when you pile it up, that moisture doesn't have anywhere to go. So it stays there with the film. Um, what we have to do is to figure out how to size reduce that, that film, dealing with the amount of soil contamination is there, then help dry that film. And I know we're, we're uh, gonna be working with General Cannabics to try to do a trial, to try to, you know, uh, do what I think one of the ideas that uh, was discussed was a fluidized bed to run some of this material down to see if we can't continue to you know reduce that soil level um, the trauma screen worked you know it definitely helps reduce that soil level but it's still a massive amount of soil that is there and then from there this is the end product so this is where an example where traditional recycling can come into play uh, this is Recy poly's facility they are generating roughly about a ton ton an hour correct me if i'm wrong yes mile um, into a recycled pellet. 
So it's, it's, an, it's an opportunity. If traditional recycling doesn't work, um, there is the opportunity to take this material and go straight into the pyrolysis systems and convert it back into petrochemicals. There's still the opportunity, in my opinion, for the cement industry uh, if we can reduce that soil level because they can take it. And it's a great fuel source, right? So the BTU value on LDP film is about 19,000. It's hotter in some instances than gasoline. So, but if you've got a, you know, a 70% soil level, that 19,000 drops down you know, below eight. So uh, it's, it becomes very, very problematic. And it's problematic in managing it. So I leave that with you. I did what I wanted to do. Give us a little bit past time to kill some time. I will open it up to questions in case anybody has anything related to mulch film or are the rest of our panel. And hearing none. Gene, I do have yeah. something. Um, Regarding that, one thing I'd like to see is th these laws in Florida allowing this, for me, illegal and environmentally unsound law of burning it in the fields, that they're allowed to pollute by law. It just does not make any sense whatsoever. I, I can understand, I think I do, but I don't want to mention it here, how the, the local county and then it goes to the state is allowed to do this and change the laws to be able to burn the stuff in the fields. The microplastics get into it, it just doesn't make sense at all. And this has got to stop. Why the EPA hasn't stepped in and said, hey, this is something uh, seriously wrong here with this law, rule, allowing such uh, pollution, we got sanction a, pollution. We got a pretty powerful uh, farming lobbying group here in the state of Florida. and. Um, it would, it would take some effort. I think it could be done. Me, personally, rather than stopping and codifying this in statute, I want to solve the problem and to convince right. the farmers not to burn. Yeah, we'd like, we'd like to do that, too. Yeah. That's for sure. But it still burns me up, so to speak. <laughs> they can, they can uh, uh, do this, um, a law that's it's incorrect. It doesn't make it a, a, a correct law. Well, hopefully with the, some of the folks that are in the room. So it's, it's Brad and, and you, Glenn, with the technologies that are, are being used to help solve some of this issue. This is a good example on the plastic side. Sure. Of, we could be use it as a fuel. If we can't, through Ismail, turn it back into a plastic pellet, right? Yes. All right, so if, if you didn't hear the question, I'm going to repeat it because we are recording um, and we didn't pick you up on microphone there. So uh, the question was, have, has anybody considered using, uh, using a layer of thin mulch, and I'm, I'm assuming biomass mulch, down onto the field prior to uh, the, the plastic mulch being put down? I don't know. Um, I don't know if anybody has actually tried that or not. It would be a good... But the, the, the problem with it is, is that the ends, the, what they call the tuck, go into the ground. It's a piece of equipment that lays it and cuts down into the ground eight inches on each side, and then the soil covers it. That's what holds it in place. So you are definitely going to have soil contact. You might ha not have it underneath that one area um, over the mound itself, but you're definitely going to have it in the tucks, and there's no other way around that. I think there's also two other issues with that. that it's another material you have to put down, well, have to procure, buy it, have people put down or machine put it down. That's an extra cost than just the foil. And secondly, on top of the foil where those plants are growing, their leaves are falling down, the pesticides are coming onto the foils, their root systems come out there and, and grow on and kind of stick on there. Then you pull everything up. They're not going to be scraping those little plant pieces off of there. It's time, and, and time is money, and they don't have that and extra, extra material to put under there to maybe stop the, the, the dirt or the soil from sticking to the plastic. That's extra cost, too, and time and money. Okay. 
All right, Albert, I'm going to get in touch with you, so let's have a separate side conversation about, about that. All right, I think we're close enough to where we can go see if they are next door. If they're not, if they don't have the, the carving station set, I know they will have the bar open, so 